the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 This morning, I would like to share a family story. And even though it's not specifically about my mother, I asked her for permission to tell it, and she said that it was okay. It's a story about my father and his life, and about his mother, my grandmother. My grandmother, Dorothy. Many of the details of this story happened before I was born, and when I was too young to remember. The details about my grandmother and her experience and of this conversation came from a conversation that I had with one of my aunts about 12 years ago. My grandmother had my father out of wedlock and moved from the East Coast to San Diego with my father when he was a very young boy. In San Diego, she met Boris Krapivin. Papa Boris was a diesel mechanic and he worked on submarines and fought in World War II. He married my grandmother and adopted my father, and my father became Kelly David Krapivin. Together they had three daughters and raised their family, and as an adopted son, my father was slowly accepted into his stepfather's family. It probably wasn't until he became a pilot in the Air Force and flew in Vietnam where he received a bronze star and a distinguished flying cross that he was truly accepted. All through his childhood, my father longed to know more about his biological father. When he asked his mother for details about his father, she told him the story about how his father had died in Germany while fighting in World War II. There was very little information he could gather, and he longed to know more. Before he married my mother, my father even changed his name back to his birth name while still honoring his stepfather. He changed his name to Kelly Krapivin O'Rourke. My father was in the ROTC and had stayed out of combat for a while as he got his master's in counseling, but he was soon off to Vietnam. After his first tour, he signed up for a second tour where he would be stationed in Germany. A perfect place for him to pursue his passion for counseling and set up a drug rehab program for pilots returning from the war and also to continue his lifelong search of searching for his father. When he told his mother about signing up for his second tour and moving to Germany, she pleaded with him not to go that another tour was just too much for her to bear. In a final effort to change his mind, my grandmother came out with the truth, a secret she had been keeping from her son for his entire life. She told him that his father didn't actually die, that he was alive and well. Well, my father couldn't back out of his, the commitment he had already made, my mother and father and brother moved to Wiesbaden in Germany where I was born. Five months after I was born, my father died in a car accident. He was driving on the Autobahn on his way to work. Witnesses said that he was trying to avoid an erratic driver, possibly a drunk driver, when his car hit black ice. He slid into a wall and was killed instantly. When my aunt shared this story with me, she said that she thought that this is what ultimately killed my grandmother. It was the pain of keeping the secret for so many years, keeping the truth from her son. She felt responsible that if she had said something sooner, if she hadn't lied, she might have been able to save his life. My grandmother's story is one of many experiences of deep pain and loss. In our lives, there are so many different expressions of a similar pain. 
experiences where we should have stood up for something or someone or stood up for ourselves. Experiences where our hearts have been broken. Experiences where we feel a loss so great it feels like it has no end. Experiences where we wish we could make amends, but we can't because that person is gone. Experiences so hurtful and painful that you just don't want to dig it up. And no matter what you do, it doesn't go away. The memories remain heavy on your heart year after year. When my aunt first told me about my, grandfather's, my grandmother's experience, I remember wishing that I could go back in time. She told me this story a long, long time ago, way before I had ever thought of being a priest. And I wished I could go back in time to relieve her pain. At that time, if I were speaking to her about today's gospel, I might have told her that Christ's imminent death on the cross in Jerusalem was unstoppable, just like her own son's death. It was his path. It was his fate. That it's Christ's death on the cross and Christ's resurrection that reminds us that we don't need to suffer. We don't need to be sad. Christ's resurrection reminds us of the life to come that death has no grip on us. None of this is permanent. And that someday she would see her son again. Christ died and rose again so that she would know and not have to suffer in this life. But I can't go back in time. I'm a lot older now, and I've lived a little bit more life, and I know that it's not always that easy. That hearing the good news of Christ doesn't always magically make the pain go away. Just being around great friends or family doesn't make the hurt disappear. Sometimes all there is to do is just be with it. To express and communicate our anger and frustration to God. To yell at God and say, God, you screwed this one up. Or God, where are you right now? Sometimes all you can do is just be with your mistakes to be responsible for your mistakes, to be with the fact that you're not perfect. Sometimes you need to be with the confusion of not knowing, the not being able to figure it out or fix it. Sometimes all there is to do is to be with the pain. to be with the discomfort. Sometimes all there is is to be with your loss and to dwell in the sadness, to let yourself cry, to open up the floodgates. As I said before, what happened in this story I shared about my grandmother happened before I was born and before I was old enough to understand what was happening. But I have memories of my grandmother. I have wonderful memories of my grandmother. There are three memories that I have of her which I'd like to share in closing. I remember her playing solitaire in her big recliner as I sat in the floor of her living room watching Wheel of Fortune. 
and behind the TV was a big picture of a seagull soaring through the clouds and glowing in the light of the sun. I remember sitting at my grandmother's kitchen table with my older brother in the afternoon. She made us her usual meat pies, also known as pasties, and for dessert, her homemade chocolate chip cookies and milk. I also remember her bedroom. She had a big dresser covered with political pens and trinkets and pictures of her family. And above everything, hanging on the wall was a cross, a wooden and brass cross of Christ crucified.